This is not my story. I heard it on a very new podcast in Norway, where one of our celebrity mediums interviews the everyman and listens to their stories. This is one of the stories. Some of these experiences are quite remarkable, and I wish more people could hear them all. This happened in northern Norway in the 80s. A man and his brother-in-law used to take a rowboat to go to the grocery store. This was, as I said, in northern Norway in the 80s, not many urban areas. The wives, I think, were in the house on land and waited for them to come back from the sea. Suddenly, they see one of the guys from the boat walking over to the estate, walking toward the house and around a corner. The women were very puzzled by this. Maybe he'd forgotten something. And had he changed clothes? They didn't see the boat. They waited for him to come inside the house, but no one came. A couple of hours later, he and his brother-in-law came home with the groceries. A couple of weeks later, they would go on the same trip to get groceries by boat. This day, the sea was very dangerous, and the boat had tipped over, and they both drowned. And when they died, his wife suddenly remembered that the clothes he wore on that day when he drowned was the same outfit he wore when they saw him walk toward the house that day, two weeks before. I was around 24 years old at the time of this event. I have always had trouble sleeping and I would sleep during the day most of the time. This particular day, I woke up way later than usual. And once I did, I was really confused because it was already dark outside. I started wondering what had happened to my mother because she never takes her keys with her. I'm the one who opens the door for her when she gets back from work at the end of the day. So I wondered why she wasn't home yet. I was about to grab my phone and call her when I realized some of the lights from our hallway were on. For a second, I thought I was dealing with an intruder or something, but I heard my mom's voice right away. How did she get inside? How come I never heard the door? I got up to make sure it was really her, and it was. When I asked her how she had gotten inside, she got really mad at me, asking if I was crazy, and told me that I was the one who had opened the door for her. I asked her how the workday was and went straight back to my room after. I never opened that door. I was sleeping. So who the hell opened it for her? The door was locked from the inside. Yes, I've already considered sleepwalking, but I've never had it. And no one has ever seen me doing it. And I think my mom would have noticed if I was sleepwalking as opposed to just opening the door as usual. To this day, I know that somebody who apparently looked like me, opened that door, but I never did. This is an experience that I had almost an entire year ago. My mother is a traveling nurse, and she often gets assignments in Alaska and other less populated states, so I usually travel three to four times a year to go see her. This was my first time going to see her in Alaska. She was staying in Fairbanks for three months. While she was at work, I would take her rental car and explore Fairbanks and the neighboring areas and towns. Side note. Alaska is very sparsely populated, and towns of just a thousand or more are considered somewhat large. One particular day, I decided to make the long day trip to Denali State Park via Alaska Highway 3, or Parks Highway, as it is often called. It's a long, windy stretch of road connecting Fairbanks to the outskirts of Anchorage, Alaska's largest city. Along the highway from Fairbanks to Denali State Park, you pass through three to four towns, the largest of those being Nanana, 
which only has a population of 365. Once you get out of Fairbanks, it gets really lonely. I remember driving 40 to 50 miles without passing another car. You can kind of get mesmerized by the beauty of the landscape and the snowy, icy mountains surrounding you and forget that you're in the middle of nowhere. Quality phone signal is few and far between when you're driving through this area. It was a weekday and off-tourist season in Alaska, so most of the vehicles I passed were log trucks or semis and the occasional regular motorist. It was early April, and there was still heavy-packed snow on the sides of the roads and in the forest and valley, but the roads were completely clear. From Fairbanks to Denali National Park, it's a four to five hour drive, depending on road conditions. My main goal was to see Mount McKinley, the tallest mountain in North America. I hadn't really researched much of how to see it, and it was harder to see it in April than the summer months. There's a road that leads into the National Park, where you can see a view of Mount McKinley, but I had passed it not knowing whether the road conditions were good. I had looked on Google Maps, and it showed that there was something like a scenic view or overlook that you see on American interstates sometimes. I assumed that you may be able to see Mount McKinley from there. If you go on Google Maps, it is across from Byers Lake Campground. The campground appeared to be closed or desolate, but there were no gates or anything stopping me from entering the area. It was at this point that I completely lost cell reception, and the GPS on my phone wasn't working. As I pulled into the campground area, there was probably 16 to 24 inches of snow on some of the roads there. Some of the roads had been plowed, so I assumed that there had to be people visiting, but there wasn't a single car or person in sight. There are a bunch of winding roads that almost resemble a maze and lead to dead ends at this campground. Now, for the entire four plus hours I had been driving, not once did I have any uneasy or bad feelings. When I'm usually in desolate areas, especially the desert, I have really bad vibes, but it wasn't like this in Alaska for some reason. That changed about 30 seconds into entering the campground area. Maybe it was the fact that I was turning into some abandoned campground, or the fact that I completely lost cell reception, but something just didn't sit right with me. Nevertheless, I was determined to see Mount McKinley, and I was trying to focus on that and find a good place to take some cool pictures. I drove down these winding roads and hit dead ends, and then suddenly it started to get really cloudy. I was getting more frustrated at not finding an area to take some pictures. And then I realized that I was lost. It's not far at all from the main highway, but nonetheless, I was lost. I started to get really confused on where exactly I was, and my GPS wasn't working. I started to panic a little. I made my way down this dirt road to the lake and there was a large opening. My bad feelings went away temporarily because the view was beautiful. The lake was completely frozen and behind it in the background was a small snowy mountain. The scene was just something straight out of a National Geographic magazine, so I stepped out to take some pictures. I stood there for a few minutes, just admiring the beauty of the Alaskan wilderness, and I was looking at my pictures to see if they were any good when I heard this scream in the distance. It was a close scream, but yet it sounded muffled, almost like something was able to control the volume of their voice to make it seem far away, when in reality it was close. My heart started racing as I looked around to try to figure out what it was. Everything in my body was telling me to book it for the car and find a way out, but I just stood there, confused and kind of scared. I felt like I was being watched, and all the hairs stood up on my arm. I was wondering if it was a bobcat or a mountain lion, because they are often mistaken for women screaming. I'm aware of this. I looked out on the far side of the lake, and I see this person wearing a light orange jacket and jeans. They had a green beanie on their head. I waved at them, 
and they waved back immediately. At first I was super relieved. There was somebody else out here with me. But then, this overwhelming feeling of dread and terror entered my body. I was wearing a light orange jacket, jeans, and a green beanie. The person had brown skin like me. I'm half Filipino and half white. I couldn't make out facial features, but I felt like I could see the black hair sticking out from under their beanie, which is the color of my hair. I just stood there for a couple of seconds, frozen in shock and fear. I raised my arm, and the person raised theirs. I waved with my other hand, and they did. I noped right out of there. I hightailed it up to the hill to my car and basically did a donut in the snow, spinning my tires trying to get out of there. I started panicking, and I was trying to find the exit. I saw a sign that was almost completely covered to the top in snow, but it had an arrow pointing to the left, and that was good enough for me. I came out to the first part of the campground. It was a bathroom facility and office, and had a veteran's memorial statue. There was this white owl just perched on top of it, staring at me with its head just sideways, like bending over. I found the way out and sped the entire way back to Fairbanks, checking my rearview mirror every ten seconds. I really don't know what to make of the situation. As I entered civilization, I calmed back down, and I didn't really have any other weird experiences in Alaska or anywhere else since then. I've considered the thought of it being a skinwalker, or an Aswang, which is a Filipino shapeshifter in folklore. One of my friends said I probably survived a 411 case, which wouldn't be surprising to me, because there have been many of those in Alaska. So, a few weeks back, my neighbor was over talking and just shooting the breeze, hanging out and whatnot. My other neighbor called me, and when I went to answer, my phone randomly died. I told my neighbor, phone's dead, I'll throw it on the charger and head out. When I put my phone on the charger, I waited for the screen to tell me what percent the battery was. It stayed black, as if the battery was completely drained. I waited about 20 seconds and it finally lit up, confirming a 5% charge. I was headed back to the living room when I thought I heard my buddy in the bathroom. I noticed that the light was off and it sounded as if he was in there trying to play a prank on me, scare me or something like that. So I tried to walk in and scare him, but it felt like I was being stopped at some sort of invisible force field. I tried my hand and it just went numb like a dead arm. The harder I tried to get into that bathroom, the more drained and the weaker I felt. I tried to force my way in. The door was completely open and it was pitch black inside. It was about 10.30 at night. I tried with some decent effort and it just felt as if something was grabbing me from the center of my chest, pulling me back and away from the bathroom. I imagined like somebody had a hold of my sternum and forcefully pulled me out of the bathroom and back into the hallway on the floor. I physically collapsed as if I had just run a marathon, absolutely drained and with no energy. I finally got my energy to stand back up and get to the door. My buddy says, that was quick. Hey, uh, what's wrong? I walked to the couch and sat down. I told him that I thought I had heard him in the bathroom and I collapsed when I tried to walk in. He told me that I had walked out of the back hallway and told him, I'm going to be right back. I forgot that I wanted to put some cologne on. I have no memory of this. Was that some spirit or entity that took over me? Did my doppelganger come and visit and take over my life for a second? I was completely sober and I was halfway through one beer when my phone died. So, I have no idea what happened.
When I was at art school in 1992, I was preparing for assessments. So I spent three days before the deadline awake and preparing everything at the last minute, which is my preferred style of doing things. I knew the house in which I lived then was haunted and I hadn't seen anything manifest as such. But many times when I walked past the back door, it would shake as though the handle was being pulled on from outside when there was no one there and no rational reason for this to occur at all. That part of the house had a concrete slab as a floor. So the weight of a person crossing it had zero effect on the structure of the back room so it couldn't cause the door to react in that way. One night, as I was walking past that door, I looked through the kitchen window into the kitchen and I saw a figure sitting in the middle of the wall as if defying gravity. After a second, I realized that the person I was looking at was actually me wearing a blue two-piece suit with a short, neat haircut, grinning maniacally and looking into my eyes with a strange knowing. As I said, I knew the place already to be haunted. And so, when I saw this figure, I was mentally prepared for the door to shake as I passed it. So far, I was not shaken by the sight of this being, as I might have had I not already been experiencing so many spooky things. Having a general interest in the paranormal, I had also researched ghosts and I knew what a doppelganger was, or a double walker, one that imitates a living being. I was forearmed with this knowledge, and I knew that traditionally, a doppelganger is believed to kill those to whom it appears, over time, through the excitation of a fear within them that gradually weakens its victim through repeated appearances, all of which somehow grant the entity an increasingly proportionate greater strength. And so, I deliberately ignored it as much as possible and did not stop or react to it at all. Quickly returning to my room upstairs to continue my work, which at that time I was thoroughly obsessed with completing, I tried not to think anything else of it. The fact that I had so much work to do at that time also helped me to ignore this vision, but I kept it in mind as a memorable event to later consider when I would have more time to spare and I forgot about it for the time being. Inevitably, I handed in my work for assessment and entered into the first weeks of my summer holiday. One day, I took acid and went back to the house and lay on my bed and tried astral traveling to the very edge of the cosmos, to the point where matter expands into the void which exists outside of matter. I had the feeling that I actually got there and was instantly repelled back into my body, but I actually probably ended up just falling to sleep and waking up again interpreting that as having achieved my goal. A little while later, my lovely caring mother asked if I would like to obtain some help trying to find a job for the summer. As she was aware, I was a poverty-stricken, dope-smoking art school student living on a small government grant, and she thought I probably needed her help, which was very nice of her. She drove me to the city and we looked through opportunity shops to look for some cheap but nice business-like clothes appropriate for job hunting. Then she paid for me to have my hair cut. At the end of our expedition that day, she dropped me off at home and I walked in, still wearing the $15 suit that she'd bought for me. Out of vain curiosity, I hurried to the downstairs bathroom mirror to check out my new haircut. Looking at myself in the mirror, it was then that I remembered and realized that with my hair cut short like that and in that suit, which was a blue two-piece pinstripe, I looked identical to what I had seen sitting in the middle of the kitchen wall that night, just weeks earlier. And this happened when I was in college I had just gotten to school that morning, pretty normal day. Students were wandering around and chatting with one another. When I was nearing our building, I recognized a classmate from one of my subjects. We're not that close, but we greet each other. When our eyes met, I smiled at her. She didn't smile back. 
I thought that was really weird because she's a really bubbly girl. She was just standing across from the building. There were quite a few students around her too. I can still remember that she was wearing a yellow blouse and was holding something in her hands. She was literally just staring at me, poker face, while I proceeded to go inside the building. That's when it got weirder. Just as I rounded the corner, I saw her, but in different clothes and with a much happier attitude. I told her right away that I had just seen her outside, but she just laughed it off. She said that she had never been there. I knew she didn't have a twin sister. It was so weird and I got really confused. I didn't know what I had experienced or who or what I had seen. So I just headed to my classroom without telling anyone else about it. About two days ago, I had a craving for McDonald's. It was around 10.30 or 11 at night, so I went out and got my food and was headed back home. I usually go through a back alley to get to the front of my house faster. This night was no different, but to give you a picture, it's a back alleyway with houses on one side and a field on the other. Anyway, I'm heading home and I take the back alley going about 30 kilometers an hour. Everything is good, when suddenly a person steps in front of my view, coming from the field side. He was maybe five or ten feet away, so I slammed on my brakes so as not to hit the guy, and I didn't. I was sure of it, but the guy wasn't in my view anymore, so I panicked a little, put the car in park, and got out to see and apologize for not seeing him earlier. Like I said, he wasn't there. I walked out to the front of the car, no dents. I looked under the vehicle and there was nothing there. I moved back a couple of steps to see if there was anyone in the field. I called out, but I got no answer. So I brushed it off as much as one could and I turned around to head back to my car. And that's when I saw myself. Granted, it was a shadow because he was standing right next to my door and I had the headlight aiming at me. I was in front of my vehicle. I asked, are you all right? I'm so sorry. I got no answer. The figure was just standing there. I said hello and still no answer. So I waved my hand and said, yoo-hoo. And he did the same. He waved his hand, but said nothing. It was freaky because it was a mirror image of my hand motion. It really caught me off guard. So I stepped back and so did the shadow. It was so weird. So I walked toward him and he did the same. And as soon as he was in range of the light, he was gone. No puff of smoke, no blur, just there one minute and in the blink of an eye, gone. I was not about to look around anymore. I opened my door and got in and I drove back home. I still get goosebumps just thinking about it. I was no more than eight years old when I saw it. Even my sister, who was 10 years old, saw it. We lived with my grandparents at the time, but my grandpa often liked sleeping in the living room because he often wakes up at night to pray at our tiny altar. We don't always close our bedroom door. Basically, the living room was next to our bedroom and our bedroom was next to the bathroom so we'd see if anybody were to go to the bathroom through our bedroom. One Saturday night, my sister and I stayed up late watching TV in the bedroom. The only light in the house that was on was in our bedroom. My grandpa chose to sleep in the living room again. 
It was past midnight, so we thought everybody in the neighborhood was asleep. That was until we saw my grandpa walking past our bedroom. We both stared at him until he disappeared from our sight. Of course, who would be scared? It's our grandpa. But for some reason, we had chills because he never came back out. We assumed he needed to go to the bathroom, but we never even heard the door close. And like I said, he never walked back the other way to go back to the living room. What creeped us out was how unusually straight he was walking, as if he was marching, like a soldier, and a bit too slow. It was almost like he was trying to scare us. It was a bit dark, but we knew it was him because of his features, so we called out to him. The first few calls garnered no reply, so we raised our voice so that he could hear us better. This time he came to us, but what shocked us was that he emerged from the living room instead of the bathroom. Note that my grandpa often wears all white clothing when he's at home. It didn't hit us until then that our grandpa was wearing colored clothing that day and not all white. The one that we saw was wearing a white sleeveless shirt and white shorts and was barefoot. So it couldn't have been him. This scared us even more. We asked our grandpa if he had gone to the bathroom just now. He said no, that he was asleep. It was impossible for him to have pranked us because there was no exit through the bathroom. The windows there are barred. We immediately told him about what we saw. He went to check, but saw nothing. We were scared kids. We didn't know what doppelgangers were until then. Our grandpa talked to us about doppelgangers. He said that's probably what we saw, that it was kind of well known in our area, and that if we saw any more, that we should immediately tell the original person about it, because if we don't, then something bad might happen to them. My sister and I never forgot about it. I would also like to share an incident that occurred a few years ago in a different part of my country. I forget the exact details, but it was on the news and all over social media. A young couple was killed in a motorcycle accident. I believe a bus ran over them. But what intrigued everyone was what the townsfolks said. They said that last night they saw the couple riding their motorcycle wearing the same clothing. But what shocked them was that they were headless. I don't know if it's real or if they were just exaggerating, but the first thought everyone had was doppelgangers. Nobody knew who it was because they didn't have their heads. That was until people recognized the clothing that the dead couple was wearing the next day. Except the couples still had their heads, but their bodies were contorted in various ways. And everyone assumed that that was what the bad omen that the doppelgangers brought were trying to communicate. That story reminded me of what I saw when I was a kid, and I still don't have a decent explanation for either. I was sitting downstairs in the kitchen, waiting for water to boil. I was talking to my brother downstairs for a bit, and he told me that he was going to take a shower. Soon after, my brother went upstairs to go shower. I was alone by myself downstairs, sitting on a chair, playing on my phone, and facing myself toward the opened bathroom. My phone was positioned upward near my face. It's not sitting so low near the bottom. About two minutes later, out of the top of my peripheral vision, I saw my brother walking out of the bathroom, wearing clothes that I have seen him own and wear before. The top half of the shirt is white while the bottom half is black. His head was positioned and focused oddly when he was walking out of the bathroom, like straight forward. He wasn't looking at me. I felt kind of startled, so I stood up and called out to him. No one else appeared in the living room, at that moment, I remembered that my brother was upstairs in the other bathroom showering. One thing I remember is that he walked out fast 
but didn't seem to completely walk all the way out. It was like he was diminished halfway through. That part freaked me out the most. It was my brother that I saw, but something was just not quite right. I've never seen a doppelganger before, and it really freaked me out. At around 11 years old, I was in my room, sleeping on the top bunk. My sister was asleep on the bottom bunk. Across from my bed was my dresser with a large mirror. If you're laying and you look to the left, the mirror is there. I remember waking up in the middle of the night and looking at the mirror, and I saw what looked like myself sitting on the bottom bunk, staring at me through the mirror with a grin except she looked like she was sitting backwards so that she had to turn her head to look toward the mirror, if that makes sense. I was really confused and really creeped out. I stared at it for a while, thinking that maybe it was my sister. I even called out her name, but it wasn't. I strained my eyes to try and see better in the dim lighting, but I got too freaked out, so I turned around and tried to go back to sleep. The next morning, I find a handprint on the mirror. I was beyond spooked at this point. That house always had weird activity too. Bottles in the bathroom randomly crashing down. Once I heard a man shout, hey, when I was alone and leaving for school. Very strange house. I know some might say that this was a dream and maybe it was, but I know that I was wide awake. It felt so real. I remember it vividly. I remember trying to get back to sleep afterward. I'll never forget, though, the feeling of staring at myself, staring back at me, so menacingly. Has anyone else noticed an increase in doppelganger sightings recently? I just had one yesterday at the library where I work. My coworker and I saw a patron, a regular who we see almost every day, walk in in sweatpants. Neither of us saw him leave. About 15 minutes later, the same man walked in through the one and only entrance and exit, this time wearing something completely different and more formal. My coworker and I stared at each other, completely puzzled. I asked him how he had walked past me so fast that I didn't even notice and why he had changed clothes. He looked at me like I was crazy. He claimed that he had been home all day and this was his first time stopping by. My coworker told him what happened and he was visibly freaked out. It freaked us all out because we looked around for this doppelganger and whoever it was had completely vanished. There is, like I said, only one way in and one way out for patrons. The other doors are either emergency exits, which would have set off the alarms, or the staff entrance, which is a highly restricted area. There was no way he could have left in that short a time without at least one of us noticing. There are no cameras in the building, so there's no way to see how this person could have left. But the only phenomenon that I can attribute this to is the mystery of doppelgangers. I'm very interested in the paranormal, but I'm not a researcher or an investigator. Just a fan, I guess. It seems like there's been an increase in doppelganger sightings. Has anyone else noticed this? I wonder what it could mean. The experience that I'm relaying here happened to one of my best friends who stays with his grandmother who's in her mid eighties. One day, her daughter picked her up and they went shopping together. 
My friend, Rob, went into his bedroom to watch TV right after they left. About a half an hour later, he heard some noise coming from the kitchen. So, he poked his head out the door to see what it was. He saw his grandmother in the kitchen, facing away from him, digging furiously through her junk drawer, obviously searching for something. He just shrugged and went back into his room. Another hour and a half passes, and he comes out into the living room. That's when he see his aunt's van pull up to the house and his grandmother and aunt come in carrying all of her parcels. He then became uneasy and asked her if she found what she was looking for in the kitchen. She looked at him like he was nuts and said that she had been gone for hours and that she had never been looking in the kitchen drawer that day. He then explained that he had seen her and that whoever it was had on the exact same clothes and the same hair. He started laughing, thinking that she was just trolling him, but his aunt looked very concerned and verified that they had not returned after their initial departure. Rob began to freak out, and when he told me what happened later that day, he was glad that he didn't see its face, whatever it was. I believe him, because he's never told a story even remotely close to this one, and he seemed really unsettled by the whole incident. Honestly, I would be too. About five years ago, my wife and I got into a pretty big argument right after our son was first born. We were all heading to the pharmacy that morning, but both of us, being immature, decided to go separately. I had the day off, so I brought my son with me. It was only about a quarter of a mile up the street from my house, so we planned on walking. Well, I left a little late, and I didn't see my wife in the house prior to me leaving because of us avoiding each other. And when I got about a minute from there, I see my wife turn the corner, so I'm kinda not looking at her. But then when we pass, we both kinda mean mugged each other and didn't say a word. I go in, I get my script, and I get home. Well, she's laying on the couch in her pajamas and not even getting ready for work. So I tapped her and I said, what the heck, you're not getting ready for work. Why did you change out of your clothes? Are you not going to work now? And she was like, what are you talking about? I've been laying here in my pajamas. I'm just gonna go get my script and a few things that I was gonna get later. I was like, you didn't go to the pharmacy earlier? I just walked past you, like 10 to 15 minutes ago when you were leaving. You gave me that evil, dirty look, so I gave you the same one in return. She starts saying that I'm crazy and must have been hallucinating and what did I take? I totally didn't believe her. I thought she was just gaslighting me, trying to make me feel like I was losing my mind. But later that night when we were cooled down, we all went to Walmart together to get her scripts and a few of the things that she needed. I literally felt like I was in the twilight zone. I kept saying like, come on, Jill, quit messing with me. She swore up and down and actually started getting a little irritated that I kept pressing her about it. Ultimately, I believe her that she had never left the house. It was one of the weirdest experiences that I've ever had. After I believed her that it really wasn't her, things started sticking out to me, like the look she gave me and how things about her face just were a little off. Even when she's mad at me, the look that she gives me is never that evil. And that's exactly what this look was. Just evil. Like, even at resting neutrality, this face would have been full of evil and hatred. It was just like that. But still, at the time, we locked eyes and I was totally convinced it was my wife. I still have no idea what happened. I've seen my own doppelganger three times in my life. The first time I was 21, with my dad and mom, 
and we were going to Buena Park, California to visit Knott's Berry Farm. We lived near Seattle at the time. We were all preparing to go down to the small pool at the end of the motel. I was watching some TV and I was in no hurry. Finally, my mom came rushing back in saying, you've got to come see this. There's a guy down by the pool who looks exactly like you. Then my dad walks in saying, I said to that guy, how'd you get here so fast? Because I thought it was you. You two could be exact twins. They begged me to come down and look at the guy, but I didn't care to see myself in swimming trunks, so I declined. The second time, I was 28 and I was in Newport Beach, California. I was at a church dance where they have a large cultural hall that has no mirrors and the walls are not reflective. I'm dressed badly. I'm dressed in a brown and white lumberjack shirt with the sleeves rolled halfway up, blue jeans, and a white belt that I once borrowed from my aunt. So, I go in and I find a couple there and I chat with them and try to joke with them for a minute. Then I see the snack bar, so of course I head over to it. I'm munching on some cookies and drinking some punch, and I look over to where the couple is still standing. There's a guy there trying to joke with them. He looks exactly like me. He's wearing a brown and white lumberjack shirt with the sleeves rolled halfway up, blue jeans, and a thin white girly belt. It was me just two or three minutes before. It was like I was watching the past of my own life. I dropped my half-eaten cookie and my half-drank cup of punch and I ran out of that hall, across the foyer, and out of the church. I ran for a whole block and a half. I finally stopped, out of breath, and I said to myself, Wait a minute, I want to see this. So I returned to the church, looked around, and my twin was gone. I'm at the Bay Dance Club in Salt Lake City. I'm 36 by this time, and I used to sit in this one chair near the entrance to the dance floor. It gave me a good view of everything, and it was just sort of my chair. I mean, not really, but I kind of became a fixture there, and everybody just knew that that's where I always sat. One night, I decided to sit someplace else, on the other side of the dance floor. I tried it out, but I'm a creature of habit, and so, eventually, I decided that I couldn't really see a lot from over here, and I just didn't like it. So I got up, and I started to make my way back across the dance floor to the chair I always sat in. I see a guy sitting in that chair. And as I get closer, I realize that the guy was me. But he looked straight through me. He was sitting there doing what I always did, checking out girls and looking around. I kind of felt a panic attack coming on. So I just kept walking until I was outside, back to my car, and I drove off. Up until now, I've never seen my doppelganger again, but who knows when it might be next. I've had a couple of creepy doppelganger incidents. My earliest encounter occurred around three or four years ago. I had decided to stay with my aunt. Her house was big, with three baths and various rooms. I was on the second floor alone when everything happened. I was working on a video when my step-aunt appeared. I followed her into her room, excited to show her what I'd done with my phone. My younger cousin was also in her arms. Both of them were female. She wasn't in the room when I walked in. I turned to look behind the door, thinking she was playing a joke on me, but nobody was present. I dashed downstairs to find her, but she claimed she had never gone upstairs. It was a pretty scary experience, so I stayed downstairs. The following incident happened about two to three years ago. I'm upstairs in a house by myself once more, my family home wasn't substantial. My elder sister arrived bearing our little sister. 
I was probably too lazy to fetch something, so I called her from across the room. Before exiting the room, she walked up to the mirror and remained there, still without responding to me. I followed her out of the room as she went at a slow pace. She was nowhere to be found. I dashed downstairs once again, where my elder sister was apparently showering in another bathroom. My younger sister was downstairs too, playing with her toys. Once again, I was super creeped out and I stayed downstairs. There are numerous parallels between these two situations. I was alone upstairs in a house that belonged to a relative. The people that came upstairs were all women and one of them was holding a toddler. Both rooms had a bed with a mirror pointing straight in the direction of the bed and it happened in the afternoon. I don't really know what all of this means or if these parallels mean anything at all, but I'm a little bit freaked out. Mimicking Cryptid by user TommySTIX87 posted to r slash paranormal in a comment. My story is a little boring, but it just happened to me on Wednesday, so here you go. I was rock climbing with two other guys in Colorado and was belaying one of them when the two of us on the ground heard something weird. The commands we use to communicate that we are safe at the top of a route are whoever the name of the guy on the ground is, off belay. So for instance, Tommy, off belay, which prompts the belayer to unclip the rope from his belay device so the climber can pull slack out of the rope. The response to that command is always the name of the guy at the top and belay off. So if Mark is at the top and Tom is at the bottom, Mark will say, Tom, off belay. Tom will then unclip the rope from his belay device so that Mark can get some slack. And the way he indicates to Mark that the slack is there is by saying, Mark, belay off. Obviously, this communication is very, very important. The climber was approximately 40 meters up on a 50 meter route. I didn't know this at the time though. The rope stopped moving, which isn't uncommon when someone's having a hard time with a move or is setting up an anchor which is what I thought was going on. And then we heard it. A voice that sounded way closer to the ground, like close enough that we could have had a shouting conversation and way farther left off route. It said, off belay. I looked at the other guy in our climbing party who was just as confused as I was. He looked at me like, what the heck was that? And we discussed where the climber should be at this time. We both determined that we should not be able to hear him that well. The rope still wasn't moving, but I decided to keep him on belay. I figured it would be best to keep him safe and just feed slack through my belay device in the event that it wasn't him. Well, that ended up being a really good thing because it wasn't him. A few moments later, the rope started moving again, later followed by a very faint syllable counted, hey, off belay but my name. It sounded way more like what it should have. We didn't really think anything of it, but we had been traveling down the wall and hit a few routes without seeing anyone. We also had a friend just a few months ago that burned in on a route when someone took him off belay when he wasn't safe. I remember seeing a video of a hiker or rancher or something walking down the road when he heard this voice of a woman calling him off the road. The guy stops to try to figure out what's going on and then just gets out of there because of how weird it was. Maybe it was nothing, but at the same time, if I had listened to that voice, it could have ended really badly. It's almost like something wanted to cause harm. The Mimic by Julius978 My friends, Mark, Pablo, Tyler, and I had planned this backpacking trip in the Colorado wilderness for months. As experienced campers, 
we were excited to explore the remote trails and rugged beauty of the area. Little did we know our adventure would turn into a chilling encounter that we would never forget. The first odd occurrence was with Tyler. He wandered off a short distance to gather firewood, but returned pale and shaken. He claimed that he heard Mark calling him deeper into the woods, but Mark had been with Pablo and me the whole time. We laughed it off, thinking Tyler was just hearing things and scaring himself. The next day, it was Mark who got separated. He had gone to check our trail map by a nearby stream. When he returned, he was visibly disturbed, insisting that he had heard Pablo's voice beckoning him into a dense part of the forest, away from the stream. This was impossible, since Pablo had been fixing his boot at the campsite. And then it happened to Pablo. He had gone to scout a nearby hill for a better view of the landscape. On his return, he was almost hysterical, swearing that he heard me calling out to him from the opposite direction of the campsite. That evening, as we sat around the campfire, we shared all of our experiences. And that's when it kind of dawned on us. There was something in the woods mimicking our voices, trying one by one to lure each of us away from the others. The atmosphere grew tense. The once familiar woods now felt menacing, filled with unseen threats. We recalled stories of skinwalkers, creatures of Native American lore, known to mimic human voices to isolate and prey on their victims. The thought that one could be stalking us was terrifying. We decided to leave at first light, cutting our trip way short. That night, none of us slept. We kept the fire burning bright, and every rustle in the woods made us jump. The feeling of being watched, of being hunted, was overwhelming. As dawn broke, we quickly packed up our camp and left. With each step away from the campsite, the weight of the forest's gaze seemed to lessen, but the fear was still there. We've been on lots of backpacking trips since, but we've never returned to that particular campsite, and I doubt we ever will. I don't know if it was a skinwalker or something else, but whatever it was, it did not have good intentions for us. I consider myself neutral on the topic of the paranormal. I think most encounters could probably be explained logically, whether it be uncommon occurrences, mental health disorders, or something of the sort. But I had an experience as a child that has opened me to the idea that there are paranormal events that are real. I remember it vividly because the event shook me up so much. It's not that intense of an experience, but it was very real, and I remember it clearly despite it happening well over a decade ago. I was sleeping in my room and I awoke to find a figure in my door. My room had a street light right outside the window and the curtains didn't block out all the light. It was lit enough to clearly see the silhouette of someone in my doorway, but not lit enough to see the details. I figured it was my mom. At least the silhouette looked like her. Being confused as to why she would just be standing there, I called out to her. There was no response. But before I could call out again, the figure turned and started to walk down the hall. Again, it's light enough for me to see that a figure is turning and walking naturally down the hall, just not enough to see details of clothing, face, skin, etc. I got up and ran after her. No reason for it, probably, just a groggy, panicky reaction. As I reached the figure in the hallway, I went to put my hands on its shoulders, and it vanished like literally vanished before my eyes. I only froze for about a second before I bolted to my mom's room and slept in her bed with her the rest of the night. We've gone over the event. A common explanation is that I was dreaming, but I remember clearly being in the hallway, lucid as everything happened. I also did wake up in my mom's bed, and she confirmed that she remembers me entering, panicked. My mom has a ton of stories that give me goosebumps and are crazy scary. In one of her recurring nightmares, 
She has a doppelganger that haunts her, and I'm wondering if that's who I saw. When I was a kid, there was this kid who looked exactly like me. Not just witnessed by me, but by my grandmother as well. My first sighting of her was when I was little, and I was sitting in the car, just staring out the window. I looked up and thought I saw my reflection, so I just shrugged back down in my seat. But then I looked down and noticed that she was wearing a different shirt than I was. My grandmother also told me that she spotted a girl that looks just like me when she's been out. And just as she's about to call my name, she notices that the woman with the girl doesn't look anything like my mom. This didn't happen once I got a little older, but it always gave me the creeps. Maybe I have a doppelganger or something like that. Any thoughts as to what this was or has this happened to anybody else? My house was being renovated to be sold, and in the meantime, my mother rented a house nearby my high school. The house was a white weatherboard house, had terrible carpet, seemed to always have slugs, and just felt old. I'm not certain if the house was haunted, but I had some experiences that I didn't otherwise experience prior moving into this rental. Before proceeding, I should mention that I do sporadically experience sleep paralysis and I have slept walked once that I know of. But for now, I want to tell you about the doppelganger at the rental. One evening, I was in the bathroom straightening my hair. I left the bathroom to make my way down the hallway to the lounge room. Between the lounge room and the bathroom is a kitchen on the right-hand side. When I passed the kitchen, I saw my sister, about 10 years old, standing just behind the boundary of where the kitchen meets the hallway. She was standing in the dark and looked a bit off color, almost gray, and her face wasn't even visible even though she was standing immediately in front of me. I asked her what she was doing just standing in the dark. I got no response, even after calling out her name. I didn't think much of it, but I do recall seeing her blue dress as extra vibrant and the kitchen as impossibly dark. I shrugged my shoulders and thought it was weird and walked down the hall into the lounge room. As I was walking into the brightly lit lounge room, my sister was on the couch, jumping up and down. It took me a whole five seconds to realize what just happened. I was not talking to my sister in the kitchen. There's no way that my sister was just in the kitchen, ran past me down the hall without me seeing her in 10 seconds, and then proceeded to jump on the couch all before I entered the room. I was in shock, but I asked my sister how she got to the couch so quickly. She seemed genuinely confused and said she'd been on the couch the whole time. The other experience was the girl by the door. This experience may possibly have been sleep paralysis. I'm not certain why, but I was sleeping next to my mom this evening on the left-hand side. I guess I always felt uneasy in the rental. Anyway, on this evening, I was fast asleep and I had an unusual dream. In the dream, the bedroom door was open, and standing in the dark of the hallway was a girl with dark shoulder-length hair and a white dress. The girl met my gaze and stared at me with an expressionless face. She took a step toward the bedroom door, and as she took a step, ended back where she started. Imagine a scene replaying of a person walking toward you, but it's like they're on a treadmill. That scene just starts over and keeps replaying but on every single replay, the person gets closer. It's like the looped video gets closer to you. I was paralyzed with fear and I could only watch as each time she took a step, she would end up back where she started. Yet with each step, she got closer to the bedroom. This continued until she was in the room and then her movement changed. She started to move toward me and she appeared to be darting back and forth, frantically inching closer. Her expression changed with her eyes wide, and she stood beside me. 
She glared at me and abruptly grabbed me. That's when I woke up. It had been a dream. I looked over to the bedroom door in relief. It was closed. But not too soon after, fully awake this time, the door opens and the girl is there again. There in the hallway. She immediately starts darting back and forward and lunges at me. I wake up... again? I look at the door and this time she's in the room already and darts straight toward me and lunges at me again. I wake up yet again and straight away she darts and lunges. This happens about six times, each time moving closer, each time being more frantic and aggressive. The last time I finally woke up for real and I sat up in the position as if I was grabbed and woke up during the attack. My breathing was heavy and my mom, who woke up, said that I was having a nightmare. These two experiences make me believe that the rental had something freaky going on. And, possibly, the girl by the door and the doppelganger are the same entity. Anyone else experienced something similar to that? Do we think it's sleep paralysis? I reckon the dream of the girl was, but the doppelganger is harder to rationalize. This happened to my fiancé, but I was in the other room, and I heard the events unfold. So, he was sleeping on the couch. I was sleeping in our bed off the living room. He passed out out there, so I turned off the lights and let him be. At around 2 to 4 a.m., somewhere in there, I heard him say, What are you doing? What did you say? And then a bang. He was wide awake and claimed that I walked into the living room, across the kitchen, in the nude, and then I walked back across, and I was mumbling something weird. He got up to push me a little to see if I was sleepwalking, and that's when I disappeared, and he fell into the table, which was the bang I heard. I was in my bed the entire time, and I didn't hear anything except for him falling. Also, I was not in the nude. Does anyone know what that could be? I thought maybe he was dreaming, but I heard him talking coherently, and then get up and fall, and he claims he was wide awake. I'm definitely freaked out, so if anyone has any answers, let me know. This experience occurred pretty recently, so my memory is very clear in regards to detail. This past year was my senior year of college, and I was thrilled to be living with an alumni of my sorority, with whom I'm very close. We'll call her Abby. Abby and I weren't actually supposed to live in the apartment we ended up in. We were originally going to be living in a townhouse with two other girls but they started so much drama a month before we were supposed to move in that we had to contact our landlord to find a different place within their company to live. Thankfully, we found a two-bedroom, one-bathroom basement apartment in a quiet area off campus. The first month was fine and without incident. But as the days went by, some strange things began to happen in the apartment. One morning, Abby woke up to a kitchen cabinet open. She wasn't too concerned about that and figured that I had just forgotten to shut it the night before. The next morning, a different cabinet was open, and once again she shrugged it off. However, I went home one weekend, and she woke up to find every cabinet in the kitchen wide open and the sink running. Needless to say, Abby was scared and spent the night at her boyfriend's. Two weeks later, we were watching TV and heard the bathroom door close. I tried to calm Abby down by saying that the fan we kept in that bathroom probably blew it closed. However, when we went to bed, we thought we could hear someone walking around in our living room. There's no way someone broke into our apartment and hid the entire day, only to come out at night to screw with us. I was home the whole day, and Abby was home from 11 in the morning on. That incident took place shortly before Christmas break, and all was calm in the apartment, until February. 
Abby had gone home for the weekend, and I was home alone, relaxing on the couch and doing homework. It was pretty late at night, so I turned on the television for background noise and curled up on the couch to sleep. I woke up at 2.32 in the morning to see Abby walking through the front door, smiling but not saying anything. I blinked, still groggy from sleep, and I asked her if she was okay. She just looked at me and proceeded to take off her shoes and walk into the kitchen. Something about her just didn't seem right. Like this girl looked like Abby and walked like her, but it also clearly wasn't her. I asked her again if she was okay, because it was so early in the morning for her to be coming home. Abby looked at me, smiled, and began washing something in the sink. Something inside me felt a profound sense of dread, like I was in actual danger and I needed to get away, as fast as possible. I went to my room and locked my door. My roommate followed me, because I heard someone tapping their finger against the door. One, two three, four, five times. It wouldn't stop. I didn't say another word, because it felt like if I did acknowledge her, it gave her more strength. I know that doesn't make a lot of logical sense, but that was my instinct. I curled up beneath my blankets and stared at my bedroom door, almost waiting for her to kick it in. My eyes felt heavy and the incessant tapping was almost like a metronome enticing me to sleep. As I drifted back to sleep, the tap seemed to slow down to a trickle. The morning after, I was groggy and exhausted. It felt like I had taken 20 Advil PM, but I remembered everything that happened the night before. Cautiously, I left my room and saw that Abby's bed had not been disturbed or slept in. I went to the living room and her shoes and purse weren't there. A cold feeling crept into my spine as I sent her a text asking if she'd come home that night. She responded that no, she hadn't and wouldn't be for another two days. But I checked the sink and the bowl that Abby had been washing had been cleaned and put away. I firmly believe that I was not dreaming or hallucinating and I know that this wasn't some elaborate prank by Abby because she would never do something like that. I firmly believe that something took the shape of Abby that night, and that its intentions were not good. There were a few other experiences in that apartment, but nothing so dramatic as what I went through that night. I'm sure it's not as scary as some other people's stories, but for me, in the moment, it definitely was. This really happened, and it's one of the most unnerving things I've ever experienced. So, it was the 4th of July, and my brother and I were setting off fireworks in the woods behind our house. We were passing back and forth an aim and flame cigarette lighter, and lighting firecrackers and other small fireworks. It was around 2 in the morning, so technically the 5th of July. I left to get something to drink, and left my brother there lighting the fireworks as usual. I get back around 10 minutes later, and he asks me for the lighter. I told him that I didn't have it, I'd left it with him, and he was actively lighting firecrackers as I left. He says, yeah I know, but I just gave it to you a couple minutes ago. Where is it? I know my brother, this isn't something he would lie about. We've talked about this many times over the years and his story has never changed. The moon was bright that night bright enough to see by. He says he saw me, in my same outfit, same face, same hair, and everything, come out, say nothing, and put my hand out. My brother assumed I was waiting on the lighter, so he gave me the lighter, and whatever it actually was walked away, never speaking a word. These woods were privately owned by my family, far out in rural Texas. Nobody else was out there, and if they were, it still doesn't explain how they looked identical to me. We continued setting off firecrackers until about four in the morning, having to use a short cigarette lighter 
because that thing stole the aim and flame. We never did find it either. A few years ago, when I was still married to my ex-wife, I saw my own doppelganger. My ex-wife was disrobing one night, and as soon as she got everything off and approached the bed, behind her was me, in shadow form, with a wide-eyed, surprised look, looking back at myself. Now, I've seen ghosts and UFOs, and I don't have any reservations about the paranormal. I'm usually inclined to believe the unexplainable, or at least have an open mind. But this one genuinely freaked me out. It was like me in the darkest tint brightness calibration before a video game. Was I scared? I mean, not enough to not continue with what we were doing that night, but I was pretty young and naive at the time. I've heard that it may mean death for the witness or something. Obviously, that never happened. Yet. But a rocky divorce and zero friends later, I can confirm a shitload of bad luck even got in an unwanted fistfight today. Attacked, even. Things are always happening to me ever since then. I guess I'm asking if anyone has any additional information on this. I can't find much, but closure would be nice. I've had a couple of experience with doppelgangers. The first was when I was about 19. I suddenly woke up from my sleep and immediately had a frightened feeling. I had a wardrobe in front of my bed at the time with a full length mirror on it. In the mirror, I can see my bed and the windows behind it. In the window behind me, I saw what appeared to be my mom, but she had a seriously twisted look on her face an expression that was creepy and that I've never seen on her before. She was staring at me in the mirror, and for a couple of minutes, all I could do was stare back at her in fear. I thought perhaps I had sleep paralysis, as I have experienced that my whole life, but it turned out that I could move, so I sat up fast and looked out the window, but nobody was there. I looked back into the mirror, and she was gone. It would have been impossible for her to go anywhere, as my room was on the second story, and the window looked out to my balcony, which is only accessible through my room. It's also unlikely that she was able to get onto the balcony through the house. She would have had to come through my room and open the incredibly hard to open, very noisy, banging balcony door that was behind my bed, right by my head. I got out of bed and went to check on my mom who was fast asleep in her bed and clearly had not been through my bedroom or jumped off the second story balcony to go through the front door, up the stairs, and back to her room in a matter of a minute or so. I turned all the lights on and I stayed up for the rest of the night. The second time was a few weeks ago. At first, all was fine. I was in bed, woken up in the night, and rolled over to hug my boyfriend. Immediately, I felt like it wasn't him. But I didn't want to believe that, and I just wanted to feel comforted. He was making weird noises, and I told him to stop being weird. He then spoke in a voice that was not his. I looked up at him, and he had the same twisted look on his face that my mother's had had. It was even creepier to see it up close. I said, You're not my boyfriend. But I was too scared to move. He tried to convince me for a bit, and I kept asking, Who are you? I got out of bed, terrified, and I just kept demanding, Who are you? You're not him. He then got up and started throwing and dragging me around the room while I kept crying, You're not my boyfriend. He managed to drag me out to the hallway, with many moments of pulling and fighting away and him throwing and dragging me. He was a lot stronger than my boyfriend was, and he was laughing, seemed disturbingly amused by all of this. I suddenly jolt and I am in bed, sitting up with my heart racing. I thought, thank God, hopefully it was just a dream. But it felt so real, 
and I was conscious and in control of my actions the entire time, unlike even the most lucid of dreams. Then I thought sleep paralysis, but then how could I move and make decisions? After searching for a phenomenon like this, I've seen a little bit about astral projection. Could that be the case? I thought I would check to see if any of the details in the house were different to my potential dream, but they were the same, including the bumped frame on the wall that was crooked that I had not noticed the day before. I really hope it was just an incredibly vivid dream, but having had experienced sleep paralysis all my life, I'm pretty good at deciphering what is an awake hallucination or sleep paralysis and what's a dream, and it definitely felt like the former. Has anyone experienced something similar, or encountered doppelgangers like this before? Does anybody know what this weird dreaming but feeling absolutely awake and lucid thing is? Any feedback is appreciated. It still haunts me. So, this really only started happening this morning. At around 6am, I got out of bed to get ready for work. While I was in the bathroom getting ready, my boyfriend was still in bed. Suddenly, I heard him, and it sounded like he was afraid of something in the bedroom. I walked back into the bedroom to see if he was okay. When I asked him what was wrong, he seemed pretty shaken up. After a few seconds, I was able to get him to explain what had happened. When he was just starting to wake up, he stated that he saw the spirit of an older lady that seemed to be cussing him out for no apparent reason. After he told her to go away, she did. But not long after this, while he was half asleep, he thought that I was laying on the bedroom floor and reaching up to run my hand across his chest. As he started to wake up though, he started to realize something about it was really off. He said that she was laying way too far away to realistically reach up and touch him at all. I mean, her arm would have had to have been like five feet long. And with that, he said that her features seemed kind of blurry. She also had a wide-eyed, emotionless stare, kind of uncanny valley-esque. He described it as if somebody had built an animatronic version of me. Later on in the day, after I got home from work, I got up from the edge of our bed to open the bedroom door for the cat. According to my boyfriend, my doppelganger showed up again, but this time she was standing at the foot of our bed and directly staring in the direction of actual me over by the bedroom door. From what we understand, whatever is trying to copy me is definitely trying to fool my boyfriend into a false sense of security. The bad thing though is that we're also pretty sure this is some kind of hostile presence. If anybody has any advice or information on what this may or may not be, especially if you know how to deal with it, we'd love to know. Any help or advice on this is something that would be very welcome. My coworker and I are curious, and a little afraid to be honest, about why we've been seeing doppelgangers of all of our fellow coworkers. I have seen every single one of my fellow night shift coworkers when they shouldn't have been there and weren't there, except for one. In fact, she's the only person that neither of us have seen a duplicate of. Both of us have made eye contact with at least one of the copies. They're around all the time. It's almost a daily occurrence at this point, and we just don't know what to do, what they could be, why we're seeing them, and what they might mean. If you have any information, please let us know. I have a doppelganger that's been following me for a while. The first story was when I was just about seven or eight. It was a summer afternoon and my friends and I went inside our house to drink water and use the restroom. 
The restroom on the first floor is right beside the stairs. So when I got out, I saw my friends staring up and they seemed really surprised when I came out of the restroom. When I asked them why, they told me that I had run upstairs and that they were waiting for me to come down. I told them it must have been my grandma they saw, but they both insisted that it was me. I was so young that it was trivial for me and I just urged them to continue our game outside. In the same house, I was a college student this time. It's a weekend and I just woke up and felt the call of nature. My room was beside the hallway leading to our second floor bathroom. So I went in there, turned the corner, and I saw our maid cleaning. I excused myself as the hallway isn't big enough and she let me pass. I then went to the restroom and two minutes later our maid knocked and asked if I was still in there. I said yes and she left. I was curious and right afterwards I asked her about it. She was hesitant at first, but she told me anyway. She said she was waiting for me to wake up so she could clean my room. When I passed by her, she thought it was her chance and went straight into my room. When she entered, I was standing there, my back facing her, and she got creeped out when I was about to face her and she bolted out of the room. That's why she went back to the restroom to see if I was still there. The third story happened when I had just moved into a new house sorting out where things should go. I think it was our second day there. We just finished breakfast and I volunteered to wash the dishes. It was just my mom and I that time. My mom then approached me and asked, were you here the whole time? I said, yeah, I've been washing dishes and organizing utensils in the kitchen. She said, then who helped me carry the mattress to our room? She had a very skittish smile on her face and was obviously scared. She swore that it was me who had carried it with her, but obviously that was impossible. Finally, I've been sharing this story where I see fit and I'll tell it here too. I moved into a new house with a friend. It's just a small one bedroom gated apartment. I was inside the room surfing the net and my roommate was in the living room watching K-drama. I heard the door open and close and the gate as well. After a few minutes, I heard the gate open, and it was my roomie's boyfriend. He asked her where I was, and my roommate told him that I had gone to my boyfriend's house. I heard them talking, and I shouted, Hey, I'm here. They both ran to the room, and my roommate had this bewildered look on her face. I asked her what happened, and she said, You passed by me and told me that you were staying at your boyfriend's. And I looked at you and nodded, and you left. I told her that I heard the door and the gate close a while ago, and she said it must have been that, but obviously I hadn't left or spoken to her. Her boyfriend stayed over that night, as we were both pretty scared that the doppelganger would come back. This was six years ago, when I was in primary school. It was after lunch, and my friend and I were walking up the stairs to our classroom on the third floor. On the first staircase, we saw one of the two gym teachers coming down and greeted him. As we got to the second floor and up the staircase, I had a fleeting thought. Wouldn't it be weird if we suddenly saw him walking down again? But then, he actually did come down the stairs. My friend and I were so shocked, we just stood there gaping at him as he looked at some papers while walking down. He didn't really acknowledge us or seem to notice us staring at him. We were frozen until he disappeared under the stairs, and that's when I snapped out of it and peered down. I couldn't see him, but he might have just walked closer to the wall or in the middle of the stairs. I had half a mind to run after him, but I've always thought it best to not interfere with the supernatural. I had heard of doppelgangers before. I was creeped the hell out anyway. So we ran to our class, still trying to process it all, while repeatedly asking each other, did you see that? They were completely identical, except that one had papers with him. We debated him having a twin, but really that was just silly. We'd been at that school for five years and we never heard about that. Plus, they were wearing the exact same outfit 
and the school only had three gym teachers. If they were, by some almost non-existent chance, actual twins, we would have heard of the gossip, or they would have walked together instead of one floor apart. We tried debating if he ran through the hallway after we saw him on the first staircase, but even if he was a gym teacher, there's no possible way, and there's no reason to go past us, run down a hallway and up two staircases, and then down the hall to meet us again just to freak somebody out. Maybe he did run up again to get the papers, but the time between meeting was at the very most 20 seconds. There was just no way. I haven't heard of him after graduation because we all drifted away, but I don't think anything happened to him. It was just weird, and one of my childhood memories that I think back on with curiosity. Another time close to that, we had an extra class day on Saturday. I took the morning off because of family business, but when I came to class, my classmates asked me where I'd gone. I told them that I'd never been there, that I took the morning off but all of them said they had seen me at class that morning. Apparently, I even went to the bathroom with the class's vice rep. I immediately had a thought and asked her if I was pulling my lips in my mouth. I had this weird habit of pulling my lip inside in the bathroom because I didn't want to get germs stuck to my lips and then lick them up. I know, it's weird. Anyway, she said no. She was genuine, and I could see the confusion on her face, like, what was that question for? She was a really serious girl, and wouldn't participate in a prank for someone she wasn't close to, if at all. In fact, the whole class couldn't be in on it, because that would be a really random prank. And even if it was, no one would ever really do anything like that. They just weren't that type. There were many divided groups in the class, so the chances of them all working together is zero. Especially against me who only hung out with two kids and almost never interacted with anybody. So, weird? If anyone has any encounters with doppelgangers, I'd love to hear about it. I'm not entirely sure if it was a doppelganger, but I really can't think of what else it would be. I think my son has a double. The first time this happened was when he was three. My older sister was staying in my apartment and watching TV in her room when my son walked in. She asked him if he wanted to watch cartoons and put some on for him. He just sat quietly at the end of her bed while she tried to get his attention. Then she hears him laugh in the other room with me. When she looks to the bedroom door, the copy of my son disappeared. When she told me this, I honestly assumed that she was high and just imagined it. The second time, a friend was visiting from the UK. They got up at night to use the restroom and saw my son's door was wide open, lights on, and he was sitting at his little table with a friend. He told me about this in the morning and thought it was kind of weird since it had been three o'clock in the morning. My son wasn't in his room that night, and no other children were present. I rationalized it as him being tired and imagining it. The third time was when my son was around eight. My best friend and roommate, new apartment, different state, got up to go to the bathroom. The hall light was off and it was dark, but she saw my son standing in the hall next to her. She told him to go back to bed and step into the bathroom. She then sees him in the mirror, standing behind her. She says, stop it, go to bed. My son then turns and walks away. That's when she realized something was wrong and looked back into the hall, but he wasn't there. She goes to his room and he was still asleep. She ran to my room to tell me. And for the first time I thought, okay, there seems to be a pattern here. Maybe there is something going on. The last time was when my son was 15, and this time, I saw it. I was in bed, depressed, and tired after having had a miscarriage. I woke up to my son curled up in bed next to me. I thought he was trying to comfort me, which was sweet. I sang a lullaby to him and pet his hair. Before it clicked, my son was 15 now. This was him at age 7 or 8. 
I froze and asked who he was. He just said, everything's gonna be okay, and then got up and left. Everyone just assumed that it was blood loss that made me hallucinate, but I was not hallucinating. I was wide awake and I didn't have any other experiences like that. No one has seen my son's double in five years, but I still think it is super weird. Recently, my friend and I were recalling unexplained and possibly paranormal experiences that we've had in the past. I remembered this one that I had pushed out of my mind, honestly for good reason. Both of us are believers in the paranormal, but we also try to find a scientific and logical answer of what we've experienced before we jump to a paranormal explanation. However, neither of us were able to reach a logical conclusion on what I'm about to describe. Firstly, a bit of backstory. The house I grew up in was in a neighborhood almost completely surrounded by forest and greenery. While that sounds like it would be tranquil, it was not. Myself and other friends of mine have felt very uneasy walking through those woods, even in the daytime. And not just the usual, I feel like someone's following me feeling that you sometimes do get in forests or other areas like that. It felt like someone was watching you from the second you stepped into the woods. My house was on a street extremely close to the forest. It was about a two minute walk from my house to the main trail. Off the main trail, you were immediately met by thick forest. There were a few small clearings before the huge open field behind the forest itself. So it would take a long time to fight your way through the large forest before getting there. Very few people would make the trek out there, so I could always almost guarantee that every time I went out there I would be able to enjoy the nature in serene isolation. In the warmer months of the year, I liked to spend my free time walking through the forest, especially in fall when the leaves had all turned orange and red, just before they would start to fall from the trees. This story takes place on one of those fall days. I had been walking through the forest listening to music with my earbuds in for at least a couple of hours. The last time I had run into anyone else was about an hour prior, as per usual, for my walks. Even though I knew that I was probably very alone apart from wildlife, I remember still not being able to shake the feeling that someone was very close to me. The sun was also setting, so any sane person would be heading home by now anyways. After walking for a while longer, I decided to eventually start heading back in the direction of the main trail. By this time, the sun was barely still out, and it was getting dark pretty fast. I had almost made it to a pretty nice clearing, but there was no way in hell that I was going to go there only to have to walk home in the dark in the forest, especially since I was already very unsettled. As I turned around to head back toward home, I heard a voice, muffled by the music playing in my earbuds, come from behind me. I had been in very deep thought for a few minutes, so I was a bit startled, but assumed that I had accidentally spoken out loud to myself. Before I could even take a couple steps further, I heard someone speak again. Fully aware of my surroundings now, I froze dead in my tracks, my heart pounding as I took my right earbud out and sharply turned around to see who was behind me. I was horrified to see a person standing with their back toward me, looking off into the distance. Everything about them was so familiar, and it took me a couple of seconds to come to the horrifying realization that I was staring into the back of myself. It was wearing my dark navy and white plaid jacket, the black hood of the very hoodie that I was wearing resting on the collar of my jacket. Even my same short, blonde, unkempt hair with its brassy undertones shining in the last bit of light left from the setting sun. And then it spoke again, in my voice. It's not too far ahead now. My exact voice, cadence, tone, everything. It took me a second to snap out of the paralyzing fear I was in and book it home. I didn't try to speak to whatever it was. I just ran as fast as I could to the main trail and out of the forest. 
As I ran, I could have sworn that I heard someone chasing me the whole way out of the forest, which might have just been a product of being hyper aware of my surroundings and my state of fear, but I didn't dare look behind me because I was terrified of what I might have seen if I did. After nearly tripping and falling on branches and stumps a million times, I tore out of the forest and onto the road adjacent to my street. I kept running until I was on the complete opposite side of the road from the edge of the forest. I turned around and the only thing I saw were the bushes and branches I'd pushed through on my way out, springing back into their natural place. I stood there staring at the forest for a minute before heading home, in fear that whatever it was would pop out, but I saw nothing. I didn't go back into the woods for some time after that, and almost every returning visit I brought a friend with me. My friend told me she has also had odd experiences in those woods, and so has her sister. They have both seen tall, dark figures standing in the woods when they took walks together. One of them would see the figure, say nothing about it to the other one, and then book it out of the forest together. I had seen similar figures, but I had just always written it off as seeing shadows from bigger trees, my mind playing tricks on me, things like that. I had blocked this out of my memory for a long time, until my friend had brought up her strange experiences in the forest, and how she constantly felt uneasy in it. Still to this day, years later, I cannot come up with a rational or scientific explanation for what I saw, and I've had little luck looking online for answers, too. Either way, it was by far the craziest thing I've ever experienced. Just three days ago, my friend and I went up to Walmart. There's this pavement trail up by my neighborhood basketball court, and all of a sudden, three people practically materialized in front of us. We thought nothing of it at first, as the trail is commonly taken. However, upon closer inspection, the people looked just like our three friends, down to the exact details. Normally, I would have no problem with this. However, one of the friends had gone to Georgia, and the other one was at their house. Around this point, we got creeped out, but oh well, might as well keep going. We get about halfway up the trail, and one of our friend's voices calls out. The voice was the exact cadence and tone. This is when things got weirder. My friend and I both turned to each other and asked if that was really our friend. From there, we braced ourselves for some kind of silly jump scare turned the corner of the trail, and they were gone. We kept going and saw them again, this time in a home goods parking lot along the way there. We were able to get a good look at them as we were far enough away to not be detected, but close enough to get details. I saw one of them, our younger friend of the group, was standing at an angle. I checked his face for identifiable features, but there was no face. I mean, like, there were no features whatsoever on his face. It terrified me. The others turned around a little bit at the same angle as they were preparing to get to the next part of the trail that led directly to Walmart. Their faces were all contorted. I mean, like, physically impossible kind of contorted. Then I realized they were following a particular pathway that we followed about a month ago. I mean, down to foot placement, people placement, everything. It was like watching my past. They rounded the corner and we followed not far behind. They were gone. Entirely gone. I mean, no trace, nothing, like they didn't even exist. I brought this up with one of the friends that we supposedly encountered, and she freaked out. She was more freaked out by the fact that them taking the trail meant that they were nearby. It's sort of become a taboo topic, but I think they've followed me home. Just today, I was taking out the garbage, and down through this alleyway, there was a voice speaking to me. It was that same friend's voice, but just ever so noticeably slightly distorted. I turned, and there were three figures, shrouded in shadow. Their outlines were the same as those very friends I had encountered. Needless to say, I finished taking out the trash at lightning speed. 
I don't really see this as anything extreme right now. I'm more so just looking for closure on what happened. I don't need anything immediately at this moment, but if anyone has an answer, and I know someone must, please let me know. This was a long time ago, when I was in the third or fourth grade. I used to live in a slightly haunted house in a small town. While I lived there, I would sometimes get the feeling that someone was following me around town, or in the house. Sometimes, I would also feel a couple of light taps on my shoulder, like someone was trying to get my attention. Other times, I would hear someone call my name from behind me. Every time I turned around to see who it was, there would be no one there. I could never see whatever was following me, but sometimes other people did. The first time it was my sister. She had finished washing the first load of dishes and was looking for me so that I could dry them and put them away. I was upstairs and I heard her yell my name. I yelled back and came downstairs. When I got there, she was staring at me like I had grown a second head. She told me that she came into the living room and saw me laying on the couch watching TV. She asked me if I was going to come in and finish the load of dishes. I didn't respond and kept staring at the TV. She yelled my name to get my attention. That's when she heard me yell back from upstairs. She looked up the stairs, then back to the couch to find that I had disappeared. Things like that happened a few more times around town with a few of my friends. They would see me somewhere, they would say hi, and they would get no response. Then I would show up shortly after, and the other me would vanish. I never got to see what it was that followed me before we moved. It never followed me out of town, or maybe it did and I never noticed, because the next house we moved into was haunted as heck. Either way, I thought it was an interesting experience. For some background, early in my childhood, we moved around a few times but it was in the same general area, so I never had to change schools. The first seven to eight years was in a home my dad built himself. He was a builder, and the area was very bad. Mosquitoes were everywhere. The terrain outside was great. There was a creek and forest area for me to play in. It was huge, and eventually we decided to move out. We rented a place a few minutes away, but we kept working on that house patching it up for selling it, and eventually we moved into another place. My dad stayed in that house for a bit to work on it some more, so my brother made the decision of living with my mom or my dad. He chose to live with my dad, and I stayed with my mom. My brother would occasionally come over, but I had to sleep in my mom's room when that happened, because we shared the same room, but never slept in it together. On the night of this encounter, I was sleeping in my room, alone. I rolled over in the bed and saw that across the room, there was a figure. I was horrified. I remembered that my brother wasn't there. The bed was made, and again, we never slept there together. The sheets were scrunched and lifted, like a figure was under them. I silently got up and went to my mom's room, and she was reluctant, but she let me sleep with her. When we went to check, the sheets were made, and nobody was there. It took some bit of time to tell her the story. Enough time that someone could have made the bed and run, I guess. I'm not sure if it was some deranged weirdo, or a mimic, or a copy, or what. But I'm so glad I noticed it. Because if it was the first one, I don't know what would have happened if I hadn't rolled over.
My boyfriend of two years and I go to the same college. We both take night classes and live in an apartment complex across the street from campus. Neither of us are paranormal enthusiasts, no Ouija boards, etc. And we're also agnostic. So class is from 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. We walk over together, but usually I walk back on my own unless I run into him coming back from the lecture building. This time I was walking alone. It's about a 10 minute walk to the apartment. I could see the light was on as I approached the building and I thought he had gotten home first. I thought that was a little strange since I hadn't seen him walking in front of me, but I figured his class had let out early. For some reason, I stopped to look in the window before I went in. I could see what looked like him sitting on the couch, but something was weird. He was sitting very stiffly with his shoulders kind of lifted and staring out the window. He, or it, must have seen me because he gave me a very hateful scowl, got up and walked to the back room, down the hallway and out of sight. When he stood up, he kind of swayed like he was drunk. This was bad because my boyfriend is two years sober. Also, he has never scowled at me like that for no reason. I went inside, calling out to him, but I got no response. I went to the back room and nobody was there. I searched that whole apartment, which didn't take long because there's only two bedrooms and only so many places a grown man could hide. The only way that this thing could have gotten out other than the door would be to take the screen out of one of the back windows and climb out. But we had to replace one of the screens last year and it was difficult to remove and put back in. You needed to remove four screws. It was an old building. It would have only had seconds to do this entire process. My boyfriend got back at around 10.30 and I told him what happened. He's a lot closer to an atheist than I am and managed to convince me in the moment that it wasn't real. But I'm not so sure really. Nothing else has been weird since and this happened a week ago, but it keeps bothering me. I barely remember this story, but my brother, who is four years older than me, remembers it vividly. My dad was on dialysis and went through eight hour cycles. One night, my brother and I are in the computer room playing games at like 2 a.m. Suddenly, from around the corner, my dad appears. He starts being mischievous and trying to scare us. My dad was never a jokester. Plus, he was supposed to be on his dialysis machine. My brother was so unnerved, he said, Dad, what are you doing off your machine? My dad replied, Oh, it's fine. The facial expressions and manner of speaking prompted my brother right then and there to ask, Are you a ghost? To which my dad replied, laughing, No, of course not then started heading up the dark stairs. My brother watched as my dad climbed the stairs and decided to follow him. When he reached the bedroom door that my dad turned into, he saw my real father was in there fast asleep and was already hooked up to his dialysis machine, which was running properly. Not only was my father never one to kid around, he was also very sick at this time with kidney failure and cancer. To scare us in the computer room, he would have had to go out of his way to literally come from the dark shadows of the dining room, which meant going down the stairs and looping around. My brother knew something was up right away, and he won't ever forget this story. So my girlfriend has been experiencing issues with a dark entity for about seven years, 
since she moved out of an old house a number of years back. This entity started showing up in the house, in a room where she said she felt very ill just being near it. This entity looks exactly like her, to the point that when she cuts her hair, it has her new hair. She's shrouded in all black, and it seems that she has facial features, but you can't make them out. She only seems to show up when my girlfriend is doing bad mentally, and seems to feed off of the negative emotions. She has been described to somewhat sound like my girlfriend, even to other people who have seen her. Along with her, there have been other spirits documented by other members of the house, with a local ghost crew coming over every once in a while. The hot spot is the closet in her mom's upstairs bedroom, where they're most sighted. Any thoughts on what type of spirit this could be? Other than filling people with a feeling of dread, this entity hasn't harmed anyone, but any help would be appreciated. One day, I went to my friend Nicole's house with my friend Crystal. While I was there, Nicole tells me this story and asks what I think it is. For anonymity, I'll change out some names, and for context, Nicole, Nicole's boyfriend John, and Crystal all work together. I hope this isn't too confusing, but I'm curious as to what you think. Nicole parked her car at work one day and saw John and Crystal having a smoke together. John was facing Nicole, and Crystal was facing John with her back to Nicole. Nicole went upstairs to her desk and everyone was asking where Crystal was. She said she was downstairs, having a smoke with John. John comes up and goes to his desk. She asks him where Crystal was, and he said he didn't know. She asked him who he was standing with, and he said no one. Nicole then gets a text from Crystal saying she was going to be late and could she tell their boss. Nicole starts freaking out because she knows she saw Crystal downstairs. She described her in detail, hair up in a top knot, white long sleeved shirt, black leggings and black sandals, with her purse hanging from her right elbow. To be clear, Crystal was just married and John is not her type, so that can be eliminated as a possibility of lying and cheating. I asked Crystal what she was doing while Nicole saw her with John, and she said she was sleeping at home. She also said that she lost those black sandals on vacation a few months back. My mind goes to a few places. Number one, how stressed are you? Your mind can play tricks if you're not feeling well. Two, astral projection since Crystal was sleeping. Three, residual energy since this is something that happens frequently. Four, Crystal's mother? Crystal is the spitting image of her mom. Her mom passed many years ago. John's dad went into the hospital the evening I was there, and the event happened a few days prior. Or, a doppelganger wearing the missing shoes. Now something else super freaky happened that night when I was at her place. The night she told me this story. I was getting ready to read Nicole's tarot cards and I went to the bathroom to wash my hands. When I came back, Nicole had my cards out already and was shuffling. Anyone who is familiar with tarot knows that you do not touch the cards until they're handed to you, and she had never done this before. I did leave them out for that crazy moon about a month ago, and they've gotten a lot stronger from it, so their pull to touch them is overwhelming. But still, she knows better. I had previously explained the rules to her of how I read tarot for everyone's safety, so I have no idea what possessed her to do that. I sat and took them back and began to shuffle, but the energy was off, like really off. Her dog was chill all night, but the second I began to lay her cards, after giving them back for her to shuffle, he began to bark at the sliding door that led to her balcony. We're talking over 10 stories here, so no one is there. No birds, no other animals, nothing. 
I started to become unsettled since the off feeling was getting stronger. We tried to shush him and settle him, but nothing was working. I decided to put the cards away since there was something amiss going on. From what I saw of her reading, it was a very good one, but there was something else stopping me from reading her. I urged her to smudge the house and everyone in it, and once that was done, I felt better. The next day, I am so freaking sick. Coughing, sore throat, nauseous, weak body. I can't eat, I can't sleep, I can't drink anything. This lasted for two days and I'm on the mend now, but still not 100%. So what in the world did she see? What was going on? Does anyone have any idea? I am at a total loss. I'm definitely not going to touch my cards until I'm 100% well again and do a cleansing on them. I will eventually ask the question, but I wonder if you may have some input as to what happened that night and what Crystal saw before. Okay, so last night my roommate and I went to bed relatively early. I decided to take a bath, bubbles, candles, all that. I hear my roommate make the noise she makes when she's frustrated and needs help. I get out of the bath and I call out. No answer. I dry myself off, hop in bed, and turn on my PlayStation. A few minutes go by and I hear it again, but this time it sounds like it's right outside my door. I can see movement and light changing in the hallway under my door. So I called out for Zelda, my roommate, again. No response. No more movement. Maybe ten more minutes go by and I hear it again. This time like she was frustrated and in pain. Almost like she was crying. I message Zelda on Snapchat but I get no response. I try to get some sleep and I kept waking up having to use my inhaler and my nebulizer because I felt like I was having an asthma attack. This happened repeatedly until about 9 a.m. when I got a response from Zelda. I've been in my room all night. I've passed out. I meditated last night. Sorry. So it definitely wasn't Zelda. We've both been locked in her room all morning because it's freaking us out so bad. It sounded exactly like her frustration fits. It sounded like she was on my floor, having a total fit about something. I don't know what this was, but does anyone know what it might have been? Just to start off, I'm not on drugs and I don't suffer from any type of mental illness, so we can rule that out right now. Weird occurrences have followed my family for years. I'm only going to stick to the ones that can be classified as mimicking, starting from my first memory of it. My brother and I are 16 months apart, him being older. We shared a bedroom in a two-bedroom apartment, living with only our mom. We had those metal bunks that you could disassemble and turn into two toddler beds, with the railing going around three quarters of the bed. Before we got our own separate ends of the room, I had the top bunk and he had the bottom bunk. My brother would cry a lot at night and that's why he got the bottom, so he could easily get up and go see my mom, and vice versa. It was normal for his crying to wake me up. One night I'll never forget though. I woke up to him crying, but he was trying to stifle it, like when little kids are done crying and they're just breathing weird. Well, I heard my own voice calling his name in a whisper. I sat there not understanding what was happening. I slid my arm down the gap between the bed and the wall. I would hold my brother's hand that way a lot of the time. He held my hand immediately, and we stayed like that until the sun came up. He told me that's why he cries at night, because he always hears me, but he knows that it's not. 
At this point, I was about four, and he was turning six. We never told my mom. When I got older, about 14 or 15, I went through an angsty phase like most girls do. I had long straight hair and was really scrawny. By this time, we were living in a different apartment. My brother and I had bedrooms at one end of the hallway, and the doors faced each other with a bathroom in between. I used to sit on the edge of my bed, and when I did, you could see me in front of my door. On multiple occasions, my brother and mom would see me sitting in that spot while I would be in the bathroom or the kitchen. They would always be like, your twin is here again, and we would just go about our day because it was so normal at that point. When I was in my senior year of high school, I went to an independent study program. It was almost a daily thing where I would hear my name being called while I was taking a test. We were able to take a test when you finished a packet, and they were stupidly simple. The voice wasn't the same every time, but the tone was, like a sense of urgency. I never said anything, because I honestly thought I was insane. I would look up and look around, trying to see who was calling me, and no one around me acted like they had heard a thing. A year later, I was enrolled in a trade school. I would hear my name being called there as well. I met a girl there who was openly practicing some form of Wicca. We became close. We went to school at night and got out around eight. Close to the end of the course, I was walking her out to the car and from the dumpster enclosure on the parking lot, I heard my name being called. I wasn't gonna act like I had heard anything, but my friend grabbed my hand and told me never to acknowledge it. It really freaked me out. I asked her if she had heard something. And she said yes, that something was trying to be me. Another time, I was at my friend's house watching The Conjuring movie. It was only he and I in the house. We were sitting on the bed in his room with our backs against the wall. Okay, bear with me on this part. In my head, not out loud, I had this thought. But the thought wasn't my own inner monologue. My thought was more of a hearing someone else's voice, but in my head. It was really ugly. To this day, I have bad vibes about it. In a really fast whisper yell, the voice said, Look at the closet. My eyes darted towards his closet, and at the exact moment, one of the doors fell off. He had normal closet doors, the basic two-panel kind. Only instead of the track they slide on being on the ground, his were on the top, and the doors hung about an inch off the ground. Seconds before the closet door fell, my friend had jumped. Nothing scary was happening in the movie. He preemptively acted spooked. We turned off the movie, and we were both kind of like, what the heck? Things like this were common when we got together, and it made us have a very strong bond. We talked for a second, trying to rationalize things. But then... I decided to tell him about this ugly voice. He then changed his whole demeanor and said, I heard the same thing, only it was your voice. And I had said it so suddenly that it caused him to jump. The only thing is, I had never said a word. Fast forward to two years ago, 2019. I had gotten a home for myself and I lived with my newborn daughter and her father. It was summertime and he was in the backyard grilling. The sliding glass doors were open, but I have thick curtains that were drawn to keep the flies out. I was sitting on my couch with my daughter, sleeping in my arms while nursing. We had been like that when he went outside and told me to stay put. Usually I would go help him. My house is rather small, so no matter where you are, you can have a conversation with the other person, even if they're across the house. So he and I are talking, and then I hear him say, okay, let's go inside. And I didn't think anything of it. Assuming he was talking to himself or the food, I don't know. He walked in and looked at me sitting on the couch with a look he always makes when he's confused. He asked me how I'd gotten back into that position so fast. If you've never seen a woman breastfeed a newborn, I don't know how to explain the logistics, but there are a lot of them and I couldn't have gotten settled again that quickly. I told him that I hadn't moved and made a comment about my butt being asleep. 
He was really weirded out and shaking his head. He's very logical and a huge skeptic. Eventually, he was ready to tell me. He said that I had been standing in the doorframe, having a conversation with him face to face, with my arm holding back the curtain. And then I had turned around and walked away when he said, okay, let's go inside. He was ready to give me an attitude for not holding the curtain for him while he carried in the food, until he realized I had never moved. I'm not sure what's going on, but that was the last double me encounter I've had, although I doubt it will be the last.